Today is free fishing day in the Lone Star State. Every year on the first Saturday in June, anyone can fish recreationally without a license in Texas. Texans will be able to fish in public waters throughout the state without a fishing license. Daily bag and size limits will still apply. Texas Parks and Wildlife Department says free fishing day is meant to encourage more people to try to start fishing. Find additional details on KSAT.com. All right, Sarah, you got two dogs. Yes. Both Spurs fans? Of course. All right, so if anyone has some dogs or Spurs fans in your life, listen up. The Silver and Black, they're opening up a dog park, the Coyote Park at La Cantera. It spans seven and a half acres, known as the largest dog park in Bear County. It includes, wait for it, an agility course so you can get your pups ready to compete, <laughs> walking trails, seating areas, a dog wash station, a play mound. It's also designated a large areas for large dogs and for small dogs. The park on Old Fredericksburg Road near Loop 1604 and I-10. For a heads up on more outdoor fun in and around San Antonio, we have an awesome KSAT newsletter. You can subscribe to it. I think we send it out every Friday. Yeah. It's fantastic. We have lots of newsletters. Today, but Today may not be a good dog park day because it's gonna be super what? muddy. Oh, it's a good point. So even though it's like sunny outside, yeah. unless you're like willing to do the wash station after. They have the wash station there you now. Go. Look at that. Let them get all muddy and then you hose them off. Shameless plugs. <laughs> Time now, just about 8.57, 70 degrees. All right, more than 6.7 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's. And the local association says this year, there's about 400,000 Texans living with the disease and more than a million family members and friends who are caring for those individuals. Tomorrow morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., we're gonna be speaking with Greg Chudo. He's the leader and executive director of San Antonio and South Texas chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. We're gonna be talking about the organization, the medical advancements, and how the state legislature is addressing the issue. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., for the full conversation. Good morning and welcome back. Look at that, a gorgeous shot of San Antonio. The sun is out, the skies are blue. Can't see any clouds or rain here, but we saw enough of it overnight. We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. It is nine o'clock, it is Saturday, it is June 3rd. Talking about those storms overnight, windy, lightning, thunder. Usually it's the lightning or thunder that woke me mm -hmm. up. This time it was the wind. I was I had to get up, look outside. What is going on outside? Because that wind, the wind gusts were so, so powerful at times. But I, do we have the power outages? We do. And speaking of the wind, it really knocked out power for thousands and thousands of people. At peak, 48,000 people without power. We know CPS crews out and about this morning. They're trying to fix as much as they can, but we've gone from 48,000 customers affected. Now, as you see on your screen, only 6,000 customers affected. And Sarah Spivey has been working through the night. So Sarah, you're telling us that we might not be done with the storms for today. Yeah, I, I think the next round of storms that we get, if we get them in San Antonio, will be later on tonight. That much like yesterday, storms that develop out west could make it to San Antonio. Last night, those storms did make it to San Antonio. Tonight, a similar setup is going to happen. And I'm glad you showed the improvement on the CPS power outages. Of course, if you do lose power, know that we are on the case out weather authority app live if you do lose power and want to stay up to date with the radar and the forecast. This is a look at a picture sent in to us from the Braun and Tezel area of CPS crews working this morning as those trees have uh, started impacted some of those power lines and this is out in Yavaldi too. So it was a gusty evening last night even beyond when the storms were moving through. Here's a look at some of the wind gusts. 52 mile per hour wind gusts at Fair Oaks Ranch, 58 mile per hour wind gusts at Stinson, 52 mile per hour wind Wind gusts at JBSA Randolph and 56 mile per hour wind gusts in Seguin. Also, about half an inch to an inch of rain fell, and that has allowed molds to go up. Molds are high, past 5,000. Pigweed is low. Right now, though, out there this morning, it is a beautiful start to the day. Go out, enjoy your Saturday. It's not until later tonight that storms are possible. 69 in Kerrville, 72 in Hondo, 75 in Del Rio, 78 4 in Pleasanton, and 75 in Gonzalez. A neighborhood view here, 66 Rio Medina. 
Pasadena and it's 71 at Port SA. So again, for the forecast today, near 90 degrees during the day, there's only a chance for an isolated shower or storm. But later tonight, that's when storms could develop out west and potentially move to San Antonio. Chance of that happening in San Antonio is 40% with get greater chances out west. And then tomorrow on Sunday, another warm day near 90 degrees. But once again, in the afternoon, a few storms are possible. So there's a lot to unpack in the forecast and I'll show you some pictures. A lot of people got some beautiful lightning. I want to show you those lightning pictures and of course more of your pictures of those trees down to around San Antonio coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, fire crews had their hands full working three fires overnight. Let's start with the most recent one, an apartment fire on the city's southeast side. This one happened a little after two in the morning at a complex on East South Cross. That's not far from Loop 410. Two people were hospitalized, one person in serious condition for burns. A second person was hurt during an assault before crews arrived. Police say one person is in custody. Investigators are talking to him about the fire. Also overnight, a house fire on the city's east side. Take a look. This was the scene on Blue Bonnet Street near North Walters. Firefighters on the scene telling us they had to act quickly, stop the fire from this home to spreading to the neighbors' homes. Luckily, everyone making it out safely. Investigators, though, still working through the morning trying to figure out how this all started. And we're also working to get more information about this fire happening on the west side of town. It started a little before 10 on the Three Amigos Chinese restaurant. That's on the northwest 36th Street near West Commerce Street. Right now, details are limited and we are trying to learn what caused this fire. All right, now to the bipartisan debt deal. President Joe Biden expected to sign it into law later today. So overnight, he addressed the nation from the Oval Office for the first time in its presidency. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze at the White House and explains. This morning, just two days before the government runs out of cash, President Biden is set to sign into law a bipartisan bill to prevent a U.S. debt default. In the first Oval Office address of his presidency, Biden arguing the stakes couldn't have been higher for the American economy. That's why I'm speaking to you tonight to report on the crisis averted and what we're doing to protect America's future. Passing this budget agreement was critical. The agreement that passed both the House and the Senate this week with bipartisan support will suspend the debt ceiling for two years past the 2024 presidential election while limiting federal spending. It puts new work requirements on some Americans receiving food assistance and in August, formally ends the pause on federal student loan payments. Not included, tax increases on the wealthiest Americans or big corporations, a key demand from the White House. No one got everything they wanted, but the American people got what they needed. We averted an economic crisis, an economic collapse. We're cutting spending and bringing the deficits down at the same time. For months, Biden insisted he would not negotiate on the debt ceiling, but with payments to millions of Americans for Social Security, Medicare or veterans benefits on the line, Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy hammered out a last minute deal. The president now taking a victory lap, trying to get in the last word while insisting bipartisanship is possible, even in divided government. I know bipartisanship is hard and unity is hard. But we can never stop trying because the moments like this one, the ones we just faced, where the American economy and the world economy is at risk of collapsing, there's no other way. All right, that was Elizabeth Schulze reporting. That it was special treat for some special kids. That's right. Three survivors from the Robb Elementary shooting in Uvalde were given the VIP treatment at last night's Houston Astros game. The kids were the guests of Astros shortstop Jeremy Pena. They got to check out batting practice, take photos, and even help decorate his cleats for a game against the Angels. All right, time now, just about 9.07, 72 degrees. The recent rain means a bee baby oh. boom. Love to see this after the break. We'll look at that impact. Look at that. See, there are so many positive impacts of all the rain in the area. Speaking of which, look at that. A gorgeous shot. You can see downtown in the distance. Look at how clear it is out there. Such a different view than what we saw overnight. We had rain, we had thunder, we had lightning, and the wind. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. So you may have noticed we've been getting a lot of rain recently and it's made a country area 
lush with wildflowers. Love to see that local beekeeper say that's resulting in a bee baby boom. All right, so Patty Santos gives us a closer look. My phone hasn't stopped ringing for removals and swarms. Beekeeper Shelby Robertson has been busy as a bee. It's all started about, uh, I'd say, nine weeks ago. Calls for bee removals and relocations have more than doubled, nearing 40 so far. I've got, I got two this morning. Lots of rain equals a wildflower boom for bees to pollinate. Now that things have dried out, bees are doing their thing. They're filling up their honey stores, and when they do that, they're running out of place to have babies. She explains they move out to make new hives, and that's where the baby boom comes in. So those are babies, but you see caps here, you see the larvae in there? On this day, Robertson was rehoming a swarm to her bee yard. She will use the honey to make organic fresh products and expect this to be her best year. I don't think anyone's had a problem with having honey. Another rain perk, she's also seen more horse mint, which is high in thymol, a natural repellent. It gets rid of our mites, our veiler mite problem, and so that helped us out a lot because then we don't have to keep treating for them, and they're getting a natural substance in the wild. She says it's all a sweet comeback for honeybees who have endured years of harsh weather and drought. We need them more than they really need us, but so we need to save them. Bees pollinate about 75% of the world's flowering plants and 30 25% of the world's crops. According to the Texas A&M AgriLife, Texas ranks sixth in the nation for honey production. Just like that, we've saved a colony of bees. Patty Santos, KSET 12 News. All right, so Sarah Spivey, are we going to get more rain? We are at some point this weekend going to get more rain. Uh, now, much like last night, storms will develop out west and try to push east into San Antonio later today. Take a look at this picture sent in through our KSAT Connect a feature on our weather app. This is mesmerizing, beautiful branching lightning all across San Antonio last night after the storms had moved through. I'm sure that you've heard about how lightning uh, often flashes from the cloud to the ground, but lightning also flashes from cloud to cloud, which is what you can see right here, and from ground to cloud, like at the bottom of this picture here. Absolutely beautiful pictures. Send them into our KSAT Connect feature. Unfortunately, there was also quite a bit of uh, wind gusts uh, moving through San Antonio last night, too. And this is a look at some wind damage in Cibolo uh, of that tree there off in the distance. And that's one of the reasons why we had at one point 48,000 CPS customers without power. Here's a look at what that storm looked like on the radar last night. Notice again how they developed out west, moved towards San Antonio, maintained strength, and then eventually fell apart just east of San Antonio. Something is going to happen similar to that tonight as well out west. We'll have to wait and see if those storms can make it, but we're going to continue to see almost daily rain chances because of the way that this high pressure system is positioned over Mexico right now, sending little bursts of energy our way. And you can see that our storm chances about 40% tonight, tomorrow, and then again tomorrow night. That's uh, scattered showers and storms possible. Right now it is nice and clear, a beautiful morning, 73 degrees outside in San Antonio. Antonio. And looking at temperatures in the clouds, you can see that there's still some cloud cover out near Del Rio where it's 75, but generally most of us are enjoying a little bit of sun, 73 degrees in San Antonio, 69 in the hill country in Kerrville, but we're quickly going to warm today. So for the most part, today's just going to be warm and humid. We're going to be topping off right near 89 degrees in San Antonio, 87 in Del Rio, 87 in Kerrville, 90 in Beeville, 93 in Catula, 90 in Canyon Lake, and 91 in New Braunfels, 90 in Seguin and Gonzalez, 90 in Hondo, 92 in Floresville, and it'll be 89 in Lost Maples. Putting it all together for you in the KSAT 12 hour forecast, quiet for most of this day, high temperature near 89. It's after 4 p.m. that we start to introduce those chances for sh scattered showers and storms, especially in the later afternoon and early evening hours. And you can see that here on the future cast. Some storms will develop out west and try to make it to San Antonio in the evening hours. Uh, so if you live west of San Antonio, Yavaldi, Eagle Pass, Del Rio, Rock Springs, you have a much higher chance of storms tonight. Some of those could be on the stronger side with those damaging wind gusts. And if those storms can hang on to San Antonio, it is possible that once again we could see some gusty winds around San Antonio. But we will see a break early tomorrow morning and then a few more showers and storms possible, especially in the afternoon tomorrow around San Antonio. 
So here once again is that weekend forecast for you. 20% chance for an isolated shower storm during the day, but it's late tonight and once again tomorrow that we have scattered showers of storms in the forecast high near 90. So my biggest message is do not cancel your plans outdoors today. Just make sure to have the KSAT Weather Authority app handy, have a way to see the radar and duck inside if you happen upon one of those showers and storms. And if you happen to lose power like many did last night, uh, we continue to keep you updated on your phones on that app as well. So that's why we recommend people download it. Otherwise, it's going to be a pretty active weather week ahead with a chance for isolated showers and storms just about every single day. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spy, really keeping your toes there. Yeah, I mean, it's an active weather pattern, so we've all got to be weather aware in the coming days. I'm so upset. I watered my plants last night. Oh, Because I hadn't been home in a yeah. week, and I was like, oh, I should probably water. And I woke up in the middle of the night just being like, wow, good job. Fantastic. It got a little extra. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. 916, 72 degrees. Okay, a new movie, Swing Into Theaters Ooh. this weekend. Max will let you know if it was worth the hype. I like the first, uh, it was Enter the Spider-Verse. Enter the Spider-Verse. Yeah, it was pretty good. It's very good. Yeah, not a big cartoon guy, but this is pretty good. All right, taking a look at those ladder numbers. Pick three, two, six, eight, Fireball five, Daily four, eight, zero, one, seven, Fireball six. Cash five, 17, 26, 32, 33, 35. Let's look at Mega Millions. Three, 16, 19, 36, 60, Mega Ball 25, Mega Player two. Good news, if you're looking to get scared at the movies this weekend, the horror film The Boogeyman is open and wide release. It's looking around $15 million. He wants to go out into the world and do great big things. Not bad, kid. I know what I worry about. And Spider-Man will swing to another victory at the box office this weekend, the long-awaited animated sequel, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse getting rave reviews from critics and fans. It's projected to easily take the top spot this weekend with 80 to $90 million in North America, hearing very good reviews on that one. That makes more sense, the 80 to $90 million instead of the 15. That's right. what I, okay. okay. <laughs> All right, in case you missed it this week, some wild stories in the news. Here's CNN's Jeremy Roth with a recap. Take a look at the week we had. Like something out of a movie, a wild crash was caught on camera in Georgia, showing a driver suddenly launching off the back of a parked tow truck's ramp and flying through the air. <laughs> a startling scene unfolded at the scene of another crash where officials had already responded. They say the driver was injured but survived the unbelievable incident. A daredevil pulled off a breathtaking and record-breaking tightrope walk over a bustling city. The dazzling and death-defying stunt was performed by 48-year-old tightrope walker Andrea Lorraini, high above the Italian city of Milan. So high, in fact, he broke the record for the country's highest tightrope walk ever, traversing 670 feet of rope at a height of 450 feet. Speaking of heights, an amazing life-saving rescue unfolded on the world's tallest mountain. Newly released video shows a heroic Sherpa carrying a climber on his back down Mount Everest after the man was discovered immobilized, clinging to a rope, and shivering in a treacherous area near the summit nicknamed the Death Zone. The Sherpa, who was guiding another climber to the summit, convinced his client to abandon their journey in order to save the ailing climber. Finally, a cop turned cowboy in Southern California in order to help a spooked horse back to its owner. Burbank police were called after the horse, named Oreo, got loose. Luckily, Officer Nicholas Moreno grew up around horses and didn't hesitate in hopping on and riding Oreo off into the Tinseltown moonlight. For Take a Look at This Week, I'm Jeremy Roth. Okay, I want to go back to the guy climbing or Mount. walking. No, 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 Which not one? mountain climbing, the one walking the tightrope. Mm -mm. There's no safety net, right? I'm assuming no. It, it oh didn't look goodness. like it. Why would anyone do that? I don't know. All right. Terrifying. Time now, 923, 72 degrees. All right, coming up in our next Texas Eats preview, oh. David Elder heads to Castroville for Let's go. some great bites. 
All I know that there's steak and Max's mouth is watering. Watering. Oh, I'm, I'm excited for this one. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Check that out. Really nice cut. Some of the fat on the outside rendered perfectly and cooked to a really nice medium. That's the bite. Money maker. <laughs> hmm. If you love ribeye steaks and you're in Casterville, this is the one to get. It has a really nice crust on the outside, lots of flavor, cooked perfectly in the middle. And those potatoes on the side, come on. Those things were rendered perfectly, nice fat content on them, crusty on the outside, tender on the inside, asparagus, and a little bit of cowboy butter on top. That's gotta be one of my favorite steak bites I've ever had. Good morning and a happy weekend. 9.30 this morning, it is Saturday, June 3rd, and I gotta say, only a few days into June, we're already feeling this wild weather. I know, the, the wind is what really woke me up mm -hmm. last night, Sarah. And you were saying some people we're even saying that the wind sounded like a tornado, but that wasn't the case. No, they're straight line wind gusts, which honestly can do just as much damage as a tornado, but you can see that the straight line winds also knocked out quite a bit of power. We're still seeing 5,000 customers without power, uh, but at one point it was 48,000 customers without power, and here's the reason why. You can see that that tree knocked into those power lines, disrupting power there. That's Braun at Tezel, and then another look at another tree, and a lot of this can happen just when a gust catches a tree branch in a certain way and ends up snapping it. Uh, so again, we had wind gusts of up to 60 miles per hour throughout San Antonio. So that can do some damage. Just those straight line wind gusts. It can sound really scary too. So keep that in mind. Uh, there were no tornadoes, but it was a very loud system with damaging wind gusts that moved through last night. Again, wind gusts reported of 56 miles per hour at the uh, Seguin Airport area. Stinson reporting 58 mile per hour wind gusts. Fair Oaks Ranch, 52 mile per hour wind gusts. Those pictures, by the way, were sent in to us through our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app. We did have some decent rain, and so that made molds go up. Molds are high, past 5,000. Right now, though, it's 73 degrees at the airport, 72 in New Braunfels, 72 in Bernie and 72 in Kerrville. For most of the day today, it'll be quiet and 89 degrees, but late tonight, there is yet another chance for some storms as they develop out west, a lot like last night. There's a chance that those storms could hold on and make it to San Antonio, which is why we've included an overnight storm chance. And then once again tomorrow, even though most of the day will be quiet, there is still a chance for some storms too in the afternoon, especially 40% coverage. A lot to unpack in the forecast. If you you'd like to submit those pictures, you can do so on our weather app, and I'd love to be able to show them on air as well. More on that forecast coming up for you in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Now to an update in a story we've been covering through the morning. We've learned a victim has died in the aftermath of a shooting. All started with gunshots at a soccer game on the southeast side of town. It happened around 10 last night. Now this field of Roland Avenue near Southside Lions Park. Police tell us fans got into a fight. That's when gunshots were fired. One man shot in the chest, taken to the hospital in critical condition. He has since died. Officers searched the area, still waiting to learn if any suspects have been taken into custody. Right now, the search is on for four shooting suspects following a drive-by shooting that happened on the city's northeast side. It happened yesterday afternoon. Police Chief William McManus tells us there were four victims. Three boys ages 5, 15, and 16, 16, as well as a 60 year old woman. At this time, we don't have the conditions that those victims are in. The chief tells us one of the teens may have been the intended target. Drive by shootings are, are always dangerous to not only the, the intended target, but to other people who are, happen to be in the line of fire. We are told investigators have information about the suspect vehicle and we were waiting. We are waiting to learn more about that. Again, police are searching for four suspects in this case. Well, the need for blood continues to grow in and around our community. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center tells us they've reached a critical supply level for all blood types. 
Roger Ruiz with the center says the recent drop in donations partly due to the summer break high school and college blood drives. They are main contributors to our blood supply. So today you can donate at Millburgers Landscaping 1604 near Bulverde Road. Those who donate from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. will receive a $10 Millburgers gift card and a tote bag. Donors are also welcome at Morgan's Wonderland 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Those who donate there will receive a free ticket to Morgan's Wonderland as well as a tote bag. Another top story this morning, a nationwide generic cancer drug shortage. It's frustrating doctors and it's putting so many patients at risk. Here's ABC's Whit Johnson. This morning, medical experts are sounding the alarm on the nationwide generic cancer drug shortage, adding to the hardship on doctors and their patients. The light at the end of the tunnel was there and then to be thrown this curveball, just very shocking. 39-year-old Ryan Dwar says he had just four rounds of chemotherapy left in his fight against pancreatic cancer when he received devastating news. The potentially life-saving drug he needed was in short supply. There was priority, uh, you know, just based on, you know, kind of the need. And so as far as rationing out goes. And so in my situation, I was not high enough in the area of need. Duars is one of the thousands of cancer patients across the country whose lives could be at risk due to a low stock of two popular generic chemo drugs, cisplatin and carboplatin. The Iowa father says he was taking cisplatin to shrink two cancerous spots on his liver, but the nationwide shortage forced his doctors to come up with a plan B last April. What's also um, disheartening is the cisplatin was working you know, with my cancer and, and it was very showing very positive results. According to the FDA, there's currently a shortage of more than 130 drugs caused by factors like changes in demand, manufacturing problems, and supply chain issues. The American Cancer Society says cancer drugs are in the top five drug classes affected by shortages and have limited treatment alternatives. The application of chemotherapy is a science way more than it is an art, and it's a regimen. So it's like imagining that you're trying to make a cake, a very high stakes cake, and that you're missing a few eggs, you're missing a little flour, and thinking that the same thing's going to come out. It doesn't happen in cooking, and it certainly doesn't happen in cancer care. The Association for Accessible Medicines telling ABC News in a statement it stands ready to work with the FDA and the administration to ensure that drug shortages are prevented and or resolved as soon as possible to ensure patients benefit from safe, effective, and more affordable generic and biosimilar medicines. As for Duars, he says he was able to work with a nonprofit organization to source the cisplatin he needed to receive his final treatments. It was very stressful. We're already going through difficult times with our with our health situations. And so to have to have that added stress, um, it was just very difficult. That was ABC's Whit Johnson reporting. We want to get to some late breaking news just coming into the newsroom at Bear County Sheriff's Office, wrapping up a press conference right now near Bernie. Yes, yeah, Sheriff Javier Salazar says a law enforcement officer allegedly shot and killed a suspect involved in a domestic violence situation. Alyssa Cole joining us live from that neighborhood where it happened on Versant Bluff in Sonoma. Ombre, Alyssa. Yes, good morning, you all. That press conference wrapped up just a few moments ago. I'm going to refer to my notes here because we just took those notes down. So what we're understanding, well, well first you can see we're here in this uh, subdivision residential neighborhood. Let me take a step out the way so you can see where I am. Take a look. We can't go past this yellow line here, but on the right side of your screen is where the incident happened. So this is what we've learned. This is what Sheriff Javier Salazar has told us. A family moved into a home on this street about three days ago. They came from out of town. When they arrived, they had another family member working on the house. That family member working on the house is, or was considered the suspect. This suspect, uh, there was a domestic uh, violence uh, situation going on. The suspect attacked one of their siblings inside of the house. During the attack, a nearby federal agent that lives in this neighborhood, uh, of course, heard, could see what was going on. Of course, approach the situation, the suspect, those family members to de-escalate the situation. However, that federal agent 
I could see, could sense that it was actually escalating. And of course, they did call police several times. That's what Sheriff, uh, Sheriff Salazar tells us. They reached out to them several times. Once the deputy was dispatched and came here out to the location, that's when things started to escalate. And I'll begin to wrap this up. As soon as the deputy arrived here on the scene, that's when the suspect made a beeline towards the deputy attacked him and attacked his face. Uh, Salazar says he's not sure if the suspect used a knife or used his hand to attack the deputy, but he has open wounds that will need stitching. The deputy then took a, several steps back, allowing the suspect to uh, put his weapons down to calm down. That did not work. Things continued to escalate. The suspect then tried to attack the deputy again, and that's when the deputy pulled out his firearm. He pulled the trigger two to three times and killed the suspect right here on the scene. We do know the suspect again, like I was saying, is related to the residents living in that house. It is the sibling of uh, the victims that were in that home. The victims in that home was a man and a woman. We're told uh, they're a couple. We're not sure if they're married. The woman, she was abused. She had, uh, she was attacked. She has wounds on her face, but she did not, she was not transported to the hospital. Paramedics were able to take care of he, her on the scene. Uh, the man was not injured. Uh, both the man and the woman, they have been taken to the sheriff's office to for questioning. But for now, we have been told that the deputy will be okay and he is in the hospital. He will just be getting some stitches, but we'll have the information on our website at ksat.com. I'll send it back to you all in the studio. Okay. Alyssa, thank you. Thank you. Time now just about 941, 74 degrees. Take a look outside with live cam, 74 degrees at 941. The blue skies oh, are out. out. There. Not a lot of clouds in the sky, especially after that rainstorm we had last night. But can we expect some more rain later on this afternoon? Sarah Spivey will let us know when we come back. There are new attractions coming here to SeaWorld San Antonio, and today we're getting a sneak peek of what you can expect this summer. We're here at the construction site for Catapult Falls, the world's first ever launch bloom coaster. This new ride will house North America's only vertical lift in a flume coaster and will feature the world's steepest drop in a flume ride. According to SeaWorld, each ride experience is around five minutes long. Catapult Falls is scheduled to open later this summer. Whenever it's time for a break from the heat, head inside Sea Star Theater for Imagine Ocean, where Tank, Dorsal, and Bubbles will take you and your family on an underwater adventure. It's so rare, I think, to be able to sit together as a family and enjoy something that everyone gets something out of. So we wrote the show and created the show as an adventure for everybody. From an emotional place, I hope people take away the idea that everyone contributes something individually to a group and that we're all worthy and we all should value that part of ourselves and that friendship is the most powerful thing of all. This show you have to really like really communicate and, and like the people you work with because you're literally in the dark with them and it's kind of like the ultimate trust fall. You know, you've heard of like trust falls. It's, it's like the ultimate trust fall because you know, you're stumbling around in the dark and if that person's not where you think they're going to be, it could be a problem. So everyone really tends to work together as this beautiful team and it becomes a dance. For more information on things to do here in San Antonio, head to KSAT.com. Priscilla Karaman, KSAT 12 News. Sarah Spivey, good day to go to SeaWorld. You know, for most of the day it will be. Uh, it, later tonight, though, there is a chance for some storms. So if you'll be at SeaWorld maybe past 4 p.m., that's when you should be on alert for some storms. Okay. Yeah, and we did get some good rain last night in addition to the winds. Here's a look at the rainfall. Uh, anywhere you see the the grains there on the map, that's about half an inch to an inch of rain. Most of San Antonio got anywhere from a quarter of an inch to an inch of rainfall with areas well east kind of missing out on the rain, but these are the areas that are doing fine as far as the drought is concerned. Of course, it wasn't just rain that we got last night. We also got a lot of lightning and even, yes, yeah, some gusty winds. A lot of people waking up this morning with some downed trees. You might have heard that wind last night and thought, oh my goodness, is there a tornado coming through San Antonio? It was straight line wind winds, straight line winds that created this damage here. We saw wind gusts of up to 50 to 60 miles per hour. And by the way, the ground is pretty saturated, so it doesn't take as much uh, to knock over these trees as perhaps in our drier years. So that is something that is unfortunate. And you know, power outages are slowly coming back on at one point. 
there were 48,000 customers, CPS customers without power. That number at last check is down to about 5,000. Right now, though, it's sunny and pleasant outside. It's 73 degrees. And as I mentioned, for most of the day today, it is going to be fairly quiet. Go out, enjoy your Saturday. 83 at noon and then in the afternoon, 89 degrees. It's after the uh, about 5 p.m. hour that we'll see a chance for storms really around San Antonio once again. So highs today on the warm side, 90 in Converse, 90 at Port S.A., 90 in Bandera, 87 in Kerrville, 80, 92 rather in Floresville, and 90 in Seguin. Here's a look at tonight's forecast when storms are at least possible in San Antonio. Once the sun sets at 830, there could be a couple of isolated showers and storms, especially out west. Those storms like last night could form a line and make it to San Antonio. They could also fall apart before making it to San Antonio. That is also a possibility. We're going to continue to keep our eyes on things out west tonight, where areas like Del Rio, Uvalde, Eagle Pass, Catula, Carrizo Springs have a much better chance at some storms and, by the way, some severe weather as well, with mainly straight line wind gusts being the biggest risk kind of like what we saw this morning around San Antonio. And if those storms can hold together, it could be a no another noisy night later on tonight in San Antonio. By the way, if you lose power, and a lot of people did last night, we are still available. You can still watch KSAT on the KSAT Weather Authority app. We cover storms alive right on your phone and taking a look at that future cast. You can see that a few storms could develop late tonight and try to make it towards San Antonio and even push east of San Antonio in the overnight hours. And then tomorrow should start off fairly quiet, but by the afternoon, once again, there could be a few storms about 40% coverage tomorrow afternoon around San Antonio as well. So looking at Sunday's forecast, another warm day where it'll be mainly quiet for a good portion of the day, but in the second half, that's when we could see some storms once again. Putting it all together for you in the seven day forecast, only isolated during the day, but tonight our eyes will be out west. We will continue to keep you updated. And then by tomorrow, another similar situation sets up high of 90. And look at next week. I mean, next week we at least have a chance for rain every day. It won't rain everywhere every day, but we do have a chance for an isolated shower or storm at least every single day of the forecast next week. Now, uh, again, if you want to post your picture, pictures on a KSAT Weather Authority app, we'd appreciate it. Just go to the KSAT Connect section and you can do it. And every now and then your pictures will get on air. Thank you to everybody who's sending pictures today. It really helps us eyes on the field out there. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. Time now just about 950, 75 degrees. So important news if you have a chronic health condition. After the break, why some experts say there is a food just for about anything. Let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, two, six, eight, fireball five. Daily four, eight, zero, one, seven, fireball six. Cash five, 17, 26, 32, 33, 35, mega millions, three, 16, 19, 36, 60, 25 mega ball, mega plier two. Good luck. Good morning and welcome back. Nearly half of all Americans suffer from at least one chronic health condition. So while medical treatments can help keep many of these conditions in check, you might wonder if what you eat is also playing a role. Spoiler, it does. As he Leslie Hudson explains, certain foods may help some of the most common health concerns. If you have a chronic health concern, you're probably used to looking here for relief. But you can also try here. That's because certain foods may ease symptoms of different conditions. For instance, only fish contains omega-3s that could help depression. Experts recommend eating fresh oily fish such as salmon, tuna, mackerel, and herring at least two to three times a week. To help anxiety, you might want to try eating more eggs. They contain lots of vitamin D, which the body uses to produce and release serotonin, the feel-good hormone. For arthritis, studies suggest green tea may lessen inflammation and cartilage destruction. If you have high blood pressure, experts recommend potassium-rich foods like bananas. They increase the amount of sodium that your body excretes in urine and can relax blood vessels. People that suffer from asthma might want to drink tomato juice. Studies show it may help airways relax. Lastly, if you have diabetes, 
opt for high fiber foods like oatmeal. With foods to help your chronic condition, I'm Leslie Hudson reporting. Okay, this is a really slow talking package. And all those things are very important. Literally had green tea this morning. I You're like, like I've had all of these things today. Yeah, except for the fish, not before noon. All right, time no. is 9.55, 76 degrees. Speaking of chronic health conditions, more than 6.7 million Americans living with Alzheimer's. Tomorrow morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., we're set to speak with Greg Schudo, the leader and executive director of San Antonio and South Texas chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. We're talking about the organization, the medical advancements we've seen over the years, and how the Texas state legislature is working to address the issue. If you have any questions you'd like to submit, do so right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Join us tomorrow, 8 a.m., full conversation. Welcome back. A big reminder for San Antonio voters who live in District 1 and District 7. You still have a few days left to cast your ballots in early voting for the City Council runoff elections. Remember, incumbent Mario Bravo going against Sucor for the District 1 seat and then headed over to District 7. Let's see if the video will catch up to me. I'm talking a lot quicker than that. All right, Marina Alderete Gavito and Dan Rossiter. They are vying for former Councilwoman Ana Sandoval's office election day. We'll be here with you live next Saturday. And happening today, Judson ISD is hosting its Drive the Bus Job Fair. Potential drivers can apply at the Rutledge Stadium parking lot in Converse from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pay starts at $17.50 an hour with incentives up to $3,200 for eligible drivers. In the pond count, molds are high past 5,000. Pigweed is low. Looking at today's forecast, mostly quiet during the day with a high near 90, but tonight storms are once again possible. We'll have to see if they can hold on to make it to San Antonio like they did last night. Similar story tomorrow. Go out and enjoy your weekend, but always keep a radar handy just in case you have to duck inside if you happen to get one of those storms. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. Starting your morning with us. Don't go anywhere because Texas Seed starts right now.